Let's combine the last two things that we did. We did the MPI for pi and we did CUDA. What do we do if we want to run a job that runs on multiple nodes and uses a GPU? Actually, there's no magic here. It's fairly straightforward. So here we have a CUDA kernel and that just does a shift. Um, it takes a vector, uh, sorry, a float and a vector, and it just shifts ele every element by this number, <clears throat> just to demonstrate what you can do. So, again, we need to set up our communicator, get our rank, um, get the size. Here I'm setting up the array. Um, I'm creating random numbers, I'm pushing them through a scatter. And then I need to set up and call the kernel. And I do this on every single node. So I here use a one-dimensional block of size 256. I calculate my grid dimension. I pass this to the kernel. This now runs on every node in every MPI task um, on the partial data that it received. I can then afterwards do a com gather and um, get a result. So here now I got that the average was minus 0 0.1. All right. Um, the main thing to say about this, there's actually nothing special that you need to do. There is one thing that might work, but I haven't tried yet. CUDA, or some versions of MPI, know about CUDA arrays. They know about GPU pointers. They can take a GPU pointer as an argument and actually transfer your data from one GPU to another directly. If your MPI for Pi was built on top of an MPI version that supports that, then MPI for Pi actually supports that as well. That does require that you do explicit memory management at the moment. The next part is not really relevant to Pitts Dined at the moment, but a lot of other supercomputers actually have more than one GPU per node. Um, we have four, I think Summit has six per node. And when you start an MPI job on one of these nodes, they all, unless the scheduling system does something else, see the same device as device zero. So they all see the same default device. So you might be running with six MPI tasks and figure you use every single GPU, but you just use the first one. To avoid that, there's CUDA select device. CUDA select device lets you actually select the device that the following kernel calls or data transfer calls use. And one easy way of doing this is just using my rank divided by the number of, um, uh, taking the uh, modulo of my rank and the number of GPUs per node. This will give you a discrete or node, discrete GPU for every MPI task if you use the same number of tasks as you have GPUs. On our nodes, as I said, this is quite important, otherwise you end up on the same one. All right, so using GPUs and MPI is not hard. There's a notebook for that. Um, you'll have about another 10 minutes to work on these two notebooks. <laughs>